welcome back to guitar class. Today, we're doing something completely different but very important. We are going to restring our guitar. So, in front of me, I have the things we need. Obviously, we need our guitar, right? And the question might be, when do you change your strings? Well, a really good indicator is if you notice discoloration on the strings themselves. So if you see, especially over the sound hole or maybe down here on the, on the fretboard, you'll see some green coloration or maybe just some darkness, some, you know, some black spots basically. And it's, sometimes it's hard to see, so good to turn it and really inspect the instrument and see if there's any discoloration. Also, you'll hear the difference over a few months in terms of how long the strings will resonate. So the brightness will go away after a while and they won't sound as crisp. And the strings will kind of start to sound dull. Another indicator that your strings might be out of, um, you know, they might be slackening too much or they're about to snap is they will go out of tune much more frequently or when you try to tune them, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear this creaking sound, this keek, and then it's gonna creak and slide way out of tune. That's usually an indicator that the, the metal is starting to slacken in certain places to relieve the pressure in other places. So best to change your strings before it snaps because it's not pleasant to get whipped by a broken string. Okay, now let's talk about what you need. You need a guitar, right? And obviously you need a guitar with strings that are old. Don't change your strings preemptively if you don't have to. Make them live as long as you can, okay? In my case, I down tune to C open a lot, which means that I'm really loosening quite a bit. And that constant change is not good for the, uh, for the lifespan of the strings. Okay, so you're gonna need a brand new set of strings, phosphor, bronze, and the way you know it's for acoustic is there's a handy dandy picture of an acoustic guitar in the background. Don't try to use electric guitar strings on an acoustic guitar. It does not work, okay? You could try, but it really does not work, all right? And you might have some indication on the, on the pack itself that says something about acoustic guitar. In this case, it's in the top left-hand side of the pack. It says acoustic guitar. Now, there's a lot of other stuff on here that a beginner won't recognize. For example, Coded 8020 bronze, deep, bright, and projecting tone, EXP 12, New York steel. But the most important thing actually is what's called the gauge. So if you want a, if you want to restring your guitar and have it be easy to play, I recommend getting light gauge. So in that top right corner here, it's gonna say medium gauge or light or uh, heavy gauge. And then it has some numbers. And really, if you stick to 0 0.011, so 0 0.011, that's a pretty good starting point for a beginner on their guitar strings. Go for light gauge, usually it's in like a purple uh, packaging, and you can buy from Daddario, you can buy from Martin, you can buy from Gibson, you can buy from Slinky, all sorts of different um, manufacturers out there for strings. And you don't have to spend that much money. They're only about four to five dollars a pop, hopefully, right, for acoustic guitar sets. All right, just make sure it's for acoustic. Next thing you're gonna need is some kind of tool. Now this is a multi-purpose tuning and string cutting tool. So the cool thing about this is that it has a winder on it so that when you are tightening the string from its loosest point, you have the opportunity to, to quickly rotate this and get it into tune. And so you're not sitting there cranking by hand, you can just wheel this around and it works really fast. On the flip side of it, you're gonna see this uh, wire trimmer. So this wire cutter works surprisingly well. You just chop the string. Now you're gonna need this, this little tool. You're gonna need that for when you get down here to the headstock. So once we wind into the peg, we're gonna need to trim that excess wire. And so we're gonna use this guy to trim, okay? Okay, the last few things you need, a glass of water either for your hydration or most importantly, for cleaning your guitar. Now, be careful when you clean your guitar. Do not use anything with ammonia, don't use anything with like a traditional cleaning product like bleach because you will remove the lacquer that is put on the finish of your guitar. It's what covers and protects the wood grain on your guitar. If you use heavy chemicals, they will wear down that paint, wear down the, the laminate, and what happens is the wood becomes exposed to the environment and then the aging process will accelerate to the point where you'll start getting cracks in your frame. 
You don't want cracks in your guitar, so don't even risk it. Don't use heavy chemicals. Use water and a toothbrush, okay? So this is just a standard soft bristle toothbrush, and it goes a long, long way. Even dry, this goes a long way. We're gonna use the water and the toothbrush to try to get rid of some of the gunk that comes off of your fingers and just from space hitting your guitar, okay? And the good thing about the water is that, you know, wood is very receptive to water. That being said, you can damage it by using too much. So really we're just gonna dip it in and we're gonna, you know, maybe wipe it on something like a cloth just to make sure that it isn't completely dripping with liquid. And then once we have it somewhat moist, we can then start to brush down the guitar. So we're gonna use this when we take the strings off. And the last thing, last things we need are lemon oil. Now you can get this from Ace Hardware and make sure that it is as pure as possible lemon oil, meaning it doesn't have any additives, it just has lemon oil. I mean, that should be the only ingredient. If I look at this, the ingredient from Grand Rapids, Michigan, great thing, it's made in America, it's awesome. Yeah, there's nothing on here that says it has anything except lemon oil. That's perfect, that's what you want. So these are fresh squeezed lemons into oil. All right, and this is a cloth. You're gonna need this to wipe down the excess oil. This will trap a lot of oils in the fabric, which is great for your hands too. So if you wipe down your strings after you're done playing, that's fantastic. But make sure you use a different one than the one you wipe down the lemon oil with because you don't really want lemon oil on your strings. It's too slippery, okay? So that's pretty much it. You need all of these things, get them prepared and get ready to go. And we'll pop into the next segment, which will be how to actually start re-stringing the guitar. We're looking at the headstock right now and we've got to remove these strings, but we're not going to start here. Well, okay, we are going to start here, but it's going to be a joint effort. So we are going to prepare the guitar here and we're going to sit next to it, hopefully on a carpet. If you have a nice, um, there's a nice accessory you can buy that actually holds the neck of your guitar up while you do this. You don't have to do that. I prefer to do it manually myself. So we're gonna take the tool here. This is the, uh, the winding tool, the multi-function tool. And we are gonna start on pretty much any string you want. But if I were you, I would start alternating directions so that the tension on the string is evenly displaced. Now you can start, again, you can start on any string you want, but if you're gonna go big, I suggest going small after that and then working your way in toward the middle. Okay, you don't have to, but you can, all right. So I'm gonna actually take this lightest string off. So this is the high E string. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tool with that headpiece, and I'm gonna stick that right onto, right onto the tuning machine. So this little metal piece, this guy fits right onto, okay? And there might even be slots in your accessory that allows you, if you see, there's a little space there. So that little space can actually fit directly on and with that, you can start to loosen it. Now be careful that you're not tightening it because you'll snap the string. So what you wanna do is put it down. Maybe, let's see if I can find something to rest the guitar on. Just to raise it a little bit because you notice that the headstock is close to the ground. It's very hard for me to get a good angle uh, with the machine. So let me grab, take that machine, slap it on that piece of metal. And while we are turning this, we're going to strike that last string, okay? So let me move over a little so you can see. So I'm striking that high E string, and I'm making sure that the pitch goes down, so I want it to sound lower and lower. And so what you'll notice quickly is that when you're rotating it counterclockwise, it tightens it, but if you rotate this thing, if you rotate it clockwise, you're loosening, okay? So it's kind of counterintuitive, but that's okay. You're gonna be all right. So clockwise rotation loosens your string. Okay. So the next thing is that your string is gonna be super loose and don't be afraid of it. It's okay. It's gonna be all right. So you're gonna continue winding or unwinding, I should say, until that string really loosens and becomes free from this hole up here that it's trapped in. And so you can actually pull, you can take this string and you can pull until it frees. If you have long nails, it comes in handy. There we go, it's finally free. Oh, I see there was another piece of metal in here. Okay, that's why. All right, 
So now you've got some pieces of metal. I've got one in my hand here, and I've got this longer piece here, which is basically invisible in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside. And now we have to go to the next part, which is you've got this string, but it's still connected to the guitar. So we have to come over here and look at where it's connected. So down here on the bridge, your string is actually inside the guitar through this hole here in the saddle, okay? And this pin, this little bowling pin kind of thing, is what holds the string inside. So your job is to pull and pull that pin out. Now in some cases, your guitar might be so uh, tightly strung that you might need to reach into your guitar and try to get a finger, try to get to where the pins are. This can be very tricky if all the strings are on the guitar, okay? So it might be good to loosen them all and then try to get underneath if you have trouble getting these free. Now, it's perfectly okay to use a lot of force to try to wrench this out because they're gonna be okay. So free those up however you can. If you have pliers, again, they really come in handy here. And just set that old string aside and set that pin aside. You're gonna need this pin. You don't replace these, not unless they break. You wanna reuse these pins, okay? So all six set aside. Okay, so that's how you take off your strings. You can go ahead and repeat that for all of the remaining five. Just to make the complete, just to make the guitar available for cleaning, okay? So go ahead, take your tool, and finish the job on all six, okay? So remember, you're just gonna loosen those strings by going clockwise with the rotation until they become free from their tuning machine at the headstock. Work your way back here and pull these pins out. But you, remember, you're not gonna be able to do that if they're tight, so make sure they're super loose and work your way until you get everything out. And I'll see you in a minute. So now you should have a bunch of strings together and you can just set those aside, okay? And again, I can't stress the importance of being careful around the tips of these strings. They can be really sharp. I actually just nabbed myself in the thumb. Uh, so yeah, be extra careful with that. Now, you've gotten all this space and maybe you have a guitar that used to have stickers on it, okay? My guitar actually had stickers on it and I removed a few of them just because I wanted to and for other reasons. And so now my task is to clean the residue of the adhesive off the guitar. Again, I'm not going to use heavy chemicals because I don't want to damage anything. Also, the frets are exposed, which means that these metal pieces, right, they are exposed. Now, actually, the more you play your guitar, the flatter these frets will become. So these frets are supposed to be like uh, steep mountains, but over time they will become uh, more blunted and that's not a good thing, right? That's okay, that can be treated later if need be. For you, it's probably a new guitar, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna take my toothbrush and I'm gonna brush my teeth. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna brush my teeth because that's, that's too hygienic. But our guitar deserves that treatment, so we're gonna go ahead and give our guitar a nice teeth cleaning, or at least in this case, a fret cleaning. So I'll start from the very top, from the headstock, okay? And all the space that the strings used to occupy, I can go ahead and, and I can brush it. Just make sure that this is not too wet, okay? So wipe it on your hand a couple times. Yeah, I know it's gross, get over it, or get a paper towel or whatever you use. And just start brushing, okay? And you can be very liberal with this process. Just make sure you get the nooks and crannies. You're trying to get all the fingerprints. You're trying to get all the uh, ash, you know, whatever you do around your guitar. It's your business, it's your life. But you're trying to get rid of all that gunk that just ends up making your guitar look and arguably sound worse than it should. So use this soft bristle toothbrush. We get to town on this guy. And we give him a nice, deep, Clean. Okay, so that's the headstock. We're basically done with the headstock. Now we're going to move on to the fretboard. So dip it in some water, get it on the edge, wipe it off on something like your hand, make sure it's not too wet. Okay, too wet is bad. You don't want the wood to uh, be overexposed to liquid. Okay, and we're just brushing away, brushing away, really uh, trying to go up and down to carve off some of that finger residue that ends up getting left on each fret, okay? So, just like brushing teeth, really. 
don't be afraid to get in there. Don't be afraid to, to really give it a good cleaning, okay? You'll repeat this process all the way down, okay? So for every single fret, you're just going to clean the crap, hopefully not literally, out of these frets, okay? Okay, so you can continue this all the way up and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we're down here at the body now and we've just finished cleaning up our fretboard. Uh, just to be aware, your, your body is very difficult to clean. I don't mean your body, I mean this body. So this body is hard to clean with just a toothbrush, but if you have little sticker residue, you can go to town on those in little circles, okay? And you can try to clean those off. Lots of little side-to-side -side strokes and use that moisture to try to free up that adhesive. And I can already see with this vigorous movement that I'm freeing up a lot of that gross sticker residue, okay? So if you have any residue like that, you can go to town on it. Use circles, use side to side, whatever you need. Just try to get rid of that stuff that you don't need anymore, okay? So use that liquid to your advantage, maybe not too much. We're really just giving it a nice cleanup. Be careful around some of these creases, like with the bridge. Sometimes these pieces are glued on, so you don't want to use too much liquid in the crack because that can actually start to loosen up the binding between the glue and the wood. It would take a lot to do that, but still, there's no reason to go after it too hard. So we're just cleaning up the sticker residue for now. Trying to make this as clean as we can. Doesn't look too bad. If I have to, I'll go in there with my fingernail because it actually works pretty well. All right, good enough. So now that we're done with that, we can put this toothbrush down. Now we need to dry off the guitar, okay? So take some cloth, something that you can dry it off with, and just start to wipe down the guitar. You might find that your cat hair or your dog hair is on that cloth, and that's okay. Cloth will not hang on to that stuff for too long. It'll just blow off eventually. But we're just trying to just clean up the guitar, really. Okay, try to get rid of some of that moisture that's in those crevices, okay? So where the fretboard meets the guitar, it's important to dry that off as quickly as you can. You just don't wanna work in anything that would separate them. Okay, but you can take this opportunity to use that moisture to clean off the guitar a little bit. There's no harm in that at all. So we're just showing her some love, as they say. Showing her some love. Also, if you have any issues with the inside of your guitar, maybe with the pickup wiring, now is a great time to go in there and fix that because you can get inside. Now, even without the oil, I can already see that the guitar is liking this moisture. It, it really... Guitars do well when you wipe them down with a little bit of water, okay? But before we can apply the oil, we need to make sure that everything is completely dry, all right? Because we don't want it to seep too deeply. We just, wanna, just want everything to be clean before we get started, okay? I think that's good enough. I'll use a different side of this cloth. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a very, very, very conservative amount of lemon oil, okay? So I'm, when I say very conservative, I mean very conservative because this stuff goes a long way. And you can tell because the nozzle is super small, okay? So take your towel and apply a little bit to a little square patch of the cloth, okay? Just a little, just a little piece like the tip here on this guy. And we can apply it side to side so that it covers the edge, okay? And maybe fold it over just to make sure that it's not too much, okay? And with this edge lubricated with this lemon oil, we can go a long way here. So we're just going to get start, started on the top part. We'll work our way to the frets, and then we'll spin the guitar. We'll flip the guitar over and do the back side, okay? So just 
hitting all of the guitar now. I'm just going to spread around this oil. Okay. And don't worry about the streaks. We will come back for them. But we want to coat the top. Okay, so we're coating the top with this lemon oil. Even the nooks and crannies, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now the top part has been lubricated with the oil. All right, now before it sets too long, I'm gonna use a drier part and I'm gonna go in circles to try to evenly spread and make sure that the streaks aren't gonna be as noticeable, okay? So I'm just gently going around with a drier part of the cloth in circles, trying to make sure that these oily swipes are uniform or as uniform as they can be, okay? You can already see the toothbrush did a lot of work. I mean, that's just phenomenal. Like I, Now it seems like there was never a sticker there. It's kind of amazing. But I do like my one sticker that's there. Okay, so now we're done with the wipe down and we're gonna proceed to the neck, to the fretboard, okay? So now we're gonna get started on this fretboard and we're gonna do the same general procedure as what we just did before. So we're taking this folded edge, okay? So this folded edge, and we're going to apply just a little bit more oil to it. Okay, so you can see I drew a little line there. And we can fold it over to spread it a little bit on the cloth. So we have a little bit of real estate there. And we're going to take this and we're going to go side to side like this. We're just going to swipe each fret, okay? It's not that complicated. We're just going to swipe, okay? And then we're going to go back across and we're going to do it again coming down. And if you get some streak marks on that body that you just wiped down, don't worry, we're about to go over it. So again, we're going to flip this over. We're going to go to the dry part of the cloth and we're going to start uh, massaging it in up and down, okay? And use your fingers to really feel the groove between the two metal frets, okay? You don't want to rub directly on top of the frets. You just want to rub the groove in between them. So if you're on top of the metal, that's not a good idea because we don't want to blunt that very much. We want that ridge to stay steep, okay? Otherwise, if you, if you blunt it, you have to take it in for servicing because you're going to find that as you're playing it, um, you know, you're, you're applying pressure in between them, and if the edges are blunted, then when you hold your finger down, you don't really hear the correct tone. So it's kind of a complicated subject, but it's all right. You can still take notes, you know what I mean? When you get to the very bottom, there shouldn't be any excess oil. If you feel like there's a little bit too much oil residue, Okay, go after it with another part of the cloth and just make extra certain, be extra certain that the frets don't have any pools of lemon oil. There should be no pools of lemon oil. Though I think it's not entirely a bad thing to have, you know, a liberal amount of oil on there. I think, I mean, it's better than it's drying out. There's no doubt about that, right? A dried out guitar in the sun is a terrible thing. So never leave your guitar in the sun. It's a terrible idea. Okay, so now that we've gotten this pretty much squared away, it's more of a rectangle. All right, we're gonna flip the guitar over, okay? So we're flipping the guitar over and by now you probably have a lot of oil on your hands. So be very careful about where you touch the guitar. Otherwise you'll have these big fingerprints. Okay, and then the second thing is when you put it back down, right, think about where you're putting it. So if you're putting it on a clean rug, that's probably fine, okay? Now we're gonna look at the backside. So the neck here, this is where your left hand goes a lot of the time. So this is actually filthy for the most part. So again, take your handy dandy toothbrush and we're gonna brush some teeth again. So just brushing the back of the neck 
okay, where your hand goes. We're just gonna brush this, try to get all the hand oils off of it if we can. It's uh, easier said than done, right? Because a lot of these, these situations you're playing guitar in, well, sometimes it's difficult to not have a dirty hand. Let's put it that way. That sounds a little uh, esoteric, doesn't it? But anyway, you do your best. You're going to notice that pretty quickly your toothbrush is going to get disgusting. And that's all right. Try to go with the grain in this case, right? So this beautiful grain on the back side of the guitar, we don't want to mess with that, so go with the grain. If you go across it, you run the risk of damaging the, the wood a little bit more, and generally it's just good to stay with the grain. All right. So we clean that. It's filthy because my hand was filthy when I played this guitar. And when I continue to play this guitar, it will probably be filthy again. So I might go over this a couple times. So then again, we're going to dry it off using some kind of cloth. Maybe it's this one, whatever. Now this is where you're gonna see, right? Because my guitar has this black laminated coating, but your guitar might have a more natural finish. And here is where you're gonna notice the big difference with the lemon oil. So flip over to a brand new side of your cloth, make sure it's nice and dry, okay? And we're gonna flip over to a brand new part of the cloth for this, make sure that it's ready for a new section of the instrument. We're gonna use the same overall idea as before, so maybe a couple folds. And we're gonna take our cloth, we're gonna apply a line here. Okay, we don't need much, but definitely enough for us to spread this oil, okay? We're just gonna spread it, because I'm gonna hold this up, and spread it on the backside and you will immediately see the wood drink in this oil. I mean, it will, it will just eat up this lubrication. And you're gonna notice, maybe even with an older guitar that hasn't been cared for, that this oil will just bring it to life. So the, the wood will look so gorgeous after this is done. It's almost like it's thanking you for feeding it. I mean, in a way, you're kind of holding a formerly living creature formerly living part of the ecosystem, so good to pay some respect to it. Give it the food it likes, likes that citrus. Maybe it came from a lemon tree, who knows? I mean, probably not. It's more of a bamboo kind of thing going on, but that's all right. So we lubricate this nice. We go to a dry part of the, part of the cloth and we wipe it down a lot. We just make sure there's no excess oil. I'm starting to repeat myself, I know. And already I can tell you that this, this neck is now shining, it's glimmery, it's, it's probably gonna feel like a dream to play. And that's what we want, that's why we clean our guitars, because they should feel good when we play, okay? So, last thing is I might look at this back side of the guitar. It's not really getting damaged all that much, so I'm not that worried about it, but nonetheless, I can still, I can still come over here and I can still wipe this down with a bit of lemon oil, maybe a little bit of water, just to make sure that it's not neglected. There's no part of the guitar that should be neglected, really, okay? And that is it for the cleaning segment, okay? So now the guitar should look absolutely phenomenal. It should be nice and lubricated. Make sure that there are no finger spots. If there are, go back over them with the cloth until there are no noticeable finger spots. Okay. And then we're gonna set this out. We're gonna let this dry for a little bit before we continue working and before we restring it. You could restring it now, but I think it's important to wash your hands because otherwise you're gonna get those oils onto the strings and we don't want that. So wash your hands nicely with soap get all that oil off, and then we'll resume and we will restring it and get to the hardest part. So grab your pack of strings and undo the packaging. But be careful with this bag because on the back of it or somewhere on your packaging, it's gonna have a color coding system and that's gonna tell you which strings go first. Now, since this probably isn't your first day with guitar, 
you know that the organization of your strings goes E, A, D, G, B, E. That's standard tuning, right? And so that's how they're going to advertise it here. Just keep in mind that they might say E first. And that means the high sounding E string is the first, the, the lightest sound. Then B second. So it's going from the highest to lowest in terms of pitch. Okay. So using this color scheme I have in front of me, I can do this. So I'll do kind of as they say, I'll work my way from the high strings up to the low strings, all right? So the first one is the high E string, which is called silver. So I'm gonna find that. It's gonna be a, it's gonna have a silver ring on the top here so that, right? The, there are two strings in each um, bundle basically. So I want the silver one. So I'm gonna undo these, I'm gonna unwind this and minimize my contact with the main part of the string. But I'm gonna take that silver one. So the purple one I'll put to the side. And now I take, so I take my silver and I take one of these pegs that I had, right? The ones that came out of the bridge. And we're going to combine them. Wonder Twin powers activate form of guitar string. So we're gonna take the silver and we're gonna put it into the last hole, okay? So as you're looking at this, remember, this one, this, this one here is the low sounding E string, the bassy string, and this side is the high sounding string, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm putting this part with the little circle on the end, okay? I'm putting this part into the hole first. Then I'm taking this peg and I'm putting it in afterward. Just keep in mind that there is a groove on these pegs, all right? And that groove needs to point to the headstock, okay? It needs to have space for that string to sit against it. Okay, so look, we're taking this circle part. We're gonna put it into the last hole. Once we know that the string is all the way in, basically that, that circle part is all the way in, we take that peg with that opening, that groove, pointing that direction up the neck, and we put that in the hole after it, okay? We apply, apply a little bit of pressure to the top of the peg once it's all the way in, and then with that string, we're gonna yank up and make sure that it's tucked. All right, once it's tucked, you can basically let go, and we're gonna move on to the hardest part. Once you know this, you're done. You can do the rest on your own, okay. So now, pay close attention. We need to take this string, the string end, and we need to force it through this pylon, this piston up here, okay? This is the high E string piston. This is the B, this is the G, this is the D, this is the A, and this is the low sounding E string, okay? So this is my high E string. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke the tip from the inside of the headstock out. So I'm coming this way, right? So I'm going from the inside out. Now, you might be thinking, great, I'm done. I can pull it tight. No, that's not right. We need to make sure that this string goes around this piston at least three times. So we want at least three wounds or three winds around this piston. So what my father taught me years back was if you can hold your pinky to your index in this uh, karate chop way, if you can hold it there at the nut and the string is able to pass over, then that's enough, okay? Or it should be enough. What you're gonna find is that it may vary depending on how you tighten it. But generally, if you have it pulled so that your fingers are able to hold the resistance up top like this, so it's all the way up here instead of down there, it should be enough space for you to do three winds, all right? So we're gonna hold it at this juncture. So we're gonna hold it at this tension point, okay? So we're holding it here, okay? And so you can transfer it a couple times if you need to, but you just want it at that point, okay? And now we have to start winding. So grab your tool, put it on that tuning machine, and we have to wind it counterclockwise. So we're gonna start winding.
counterclockwise. Now the tricky thing is you need to make sure that all of the winds are going in descending, in a descending spiral. They should never be climbing up. They should be going deeper and deeper. So all of the winds are progressively going deeper. And again, you're going counterclockwise with this, okay? And you just want to use your left hand or whatever hand is holding the, the neck part of the string. You want that to be nice and firm. Don't let up on the pressure. It's going to start squeezing your hand. That's okay. That's normal. So you still have the string be below, okay, in a downward spiral. If that's not the case, you may need to go back, loosen it, and adjust it until it's all in a nice, clean downward spiral, okay? Make sure that this string is actually in the correct notch of the nut. So that means that because this is the E string, I need to be sure that it goes into this, this last nut slot. Also, I need to go back to the base over here, over to the bridge. I need to make sure that over here on the bridge, it's also in the correct place. That means that this position should be on this, this piece of wood right here. It should be in the correct slot. And in this case, it is. So I'll grab my smartphone, I will pull out my app, my Guitar Tuna app, and I will strike it and tune it. There we go. Just about. And the very last thing I have to say about tuning is when you're finished with each string, go with your fingers and pull up on the string toward you. This is called stretching the string. And the more you stretch your string, the longer it will stay in the correct tuning. So if you don't stretch, it will pop out of its tune, out of its key, pretty quickly and pretty often. But if you stretch it a couple of times and then tune it back, okay, just a couple times you, yank on it a little bit toward you, not too much, but just stretching it out a little bit. And that's pretty much it. That's the same strategy you'll use for all of the rest. So this was the high E string. Again, I made sure that it went from the inside out. I used a counterclockwise rotation. I made sure that the spirals on the piston were going in a downward direction. So that means that as they travel down this piston, they go down toward this wood, okay? And then I made sure that it went into the slot down here at the bridge and made sure that it was fitting in the correct place on the piece of wood there. And now you have what you need to string all of the rest of them. Go carefully, but go steadily. If you hesitate or if you are not confident and you don't really go for it, sometimes the string will work against you, okay? So be confident, go for it, see what happens, and you just might surprise yourself, okay? So... That is how to care for and how to string a guitar. And I will see you in the next one.